Can Christians experience spiritual attack? If so, what does it all mean? Find out now on New Age to New Heart. Hi, I'm Doreen Virtue, and I'm an ex-New Age teacher. Hi, I'm Jen Misa, and I'm an ex-psychic. Hi, I'm Jack Marino Chen, and I'm an ex-occultist. And, and this, this is, is New Age to New Heart. Heart. Welcome back to another episode of New Age to New Heart with me, Jen Niza, Jack Marino Chen. Hi. And Doreen Virtue. Hello. In this episode of New Age to New Heart, we are going to be talking about spiritual attacks. This is a frequently asked question coming out of the occult, coming out of the New Age. Wasn't the enemy mad? Were you attacked when you got out of that lifestyle? And I, preparing for this, I was, I was thinking, I, I can't wait to hear both from Doreen and Jack. Doreen, you were, your platform was so huge. I'm thinking right out of the gate, there has to be some sort of spiritual attack as you start coming to Christ, when you come to Christ. And I know we're going to get into it a little bit later. Uh, we we want to mention how this is not a reason to go to deliverance ministries and mm. you don't need deliverance should you be attacked coming out of the demonic. So Dee, would you mind sharing with us yeah. your experience? Oh, it was horrible. I wish you guys were there with me to help mm. me through this. I wish I had a podcast like this back then. Um, I, I had never consciously experienced a spiritual warfare before because I was unknowingly a friend of the devil. So I was on his team. I'd had poltergeist and and weird supernatural experiences my whole life, but nothing where I felt like I was being attacked until it was the day, the literally the day I read Deuteronomy 18, 10 through 12, and gave my life to Jesus and, and turned away from the new age. Um, that night, there was this sense, and, and this is, I'd like to talk with you guys about this because, um, you know, I was always very intuitive and, and then it developed into psychic work and clairvoyance, which is not from God. Um, and and so in, intuitively or feeling wise, I could sense this very nefarious presence, just this evil presence there. And and it and it felt like a lot of little things just attacking my body. I mean, it was just very much um, discernment of these unclean spirits. And my first thought was, um, oh, witches are mad at me for doing, mm -hmm. you know, becoming a Christian in there they're praying against me or whatever witches do. And then that was confirmed by several people who said that that was posted on Facebook and witches groups to, um, they don't pray, whatever they do against me, casting spells against me. And and so the bottom line was that I, I had insomnia for days after my salvation when it should have been the most joyous time of my life. It was quickly followed by the most frightening time of my life where I'm getting attacked and I don't know anyone to talk to about this. I, you know, Michael and I were members of a very liberal progressive church. Although one of the women there gave me a copy of C.S. Lewis's Screw Tape Letters, and that did seem to help a little bit, even though that's not a biblical book, and I don't recommend it. But it, right. it just kind of made me not feel so alone. So I started to do what people do when they're having an issue. I Googled it. <laughs> what do I do? And <laughs> and that's a mistake in many ways for many issues. And so the Google led me to deliverance ministries. Um, mm -hmm. to one of them, um, an online audio where the guy would do prayers over you uh, to release the effects of witchcraft and new age and all this. And so I started to play his audios 24 seven, just like Michael was going crazy because this audio was always on in our little house that we lived in then. And it seemed to help a little bit, um, but I was still not able to sleep, so I started to take a lot of melatonin. I mean, I was taking maybe 10, sometimes 20 melatonin pills just to knock myself out. Wow. And it, it just, there was no relief at all. Um, and then I, I contacted an online um, uh, deliverance service that they wanted me to come out and talk with them. And then finally, I contacted a man who's a very famous deliverance minister uh, he says, and and he does video sessions with people, and it was very expensive. I remember that, and he holds a cross up to you, and he he's like a he's dressed like a Roman Catholic priest with a cross, and he's casting out 
witches and devils out of you. And what I kept noticing is none of this worked. It actually made things worse. <laughs> so I was just desperate. So a couple things happened. I just, okay, what a concept. I turned to the Bible. So <laughs> what does the Bible say? <laughs> and the Bible, two things in the KJV um, in Isaiah, I think it's 61, three, I can't remember the exact number, but it's the, it's the beauty for ashes passage uh, where he says, uh, God says through Isaiah, to put on the garment of praise to lift the spirit of he heaviness. And I was like, that's what I have, the spirit of heaviness. So I started to praise God sincerely, not you know just to get his help, but everything I could think of that I was happy about and praising him. And that started to help. And then the next thing was I was studying Matthew 4 about Jesus <laughs> in the wilderness with the devil. What does Jesus do with the devil? He says, it is written, it is written. So that... From there, we started listening to audios of the Bible every night, and we still do. That's so it's been seven years now. I well, from 2017, so I guess that's seven years um, of just listening to one chapter of the Bible every night, and that that's done more for my help than anything. But Jen, you and I interviewed Pastor Jim Osman about this, and one of the things that stood out in that interview, we should put a link to that video below, is that he said. Um, that the number one cause of spiritual warfare was unrepentant sin. Remember he said that? Because mm -hmm. Jim Osmond went through the whole Bible and looked at what causes spiritual warfare. So so none of us are sinless. To say you are is to say you're a liar. It's, you're a liar. But you can definitely work in that direction to mortify sin, as the Puritans call it. And, and so I've been really working uh, not to, you don't get saved by your good works, obviously. It's all God's grace. But we want to please God as a person with a new life, new heart. And so just really trying to live a godly, righteous life as much as you can, not in our own strength, in, in God's strength, in Christ's strength. You know what it is, what I'm thinking about? You know, the demons are so evil. They're so nasty. They didn't want you to enjoy the peace that is rightfully ours as children of God on that look. Hello. Looking at the camera now. Sorry, guys. Um the devil doesn't want that. The demons don't want that. But see, here's the thing. They know they can't steal your soul. Yeah. I always say the devil can't steal your soul, so he's going to try to steal your peace. Yeah. So you come out of all those years in the new age, and I really believe that we are attacked more as Christians than ever, yeah. than even perhaps the unbeliever, because the enemy doesn't want you now bringing that testimony of having that platform, serving him for so many years, and your entire life has changed, your entire heart is changed, and you're sharing it with the world with a different platform, so to speak, right? A different audience, I should say, maybe, but not completely because all the people that were following you and knew you, including myself, and I shared that in one of our episodes, that when oh, I was Mark. looking for people like me and I saw your testimony, I was in awe. I mean... Every salvation is a miracle. Every testimony is miraculous and beautiful. But when you see, not but, and mm -hmm. when you see somebody that served the devil for so many years with this amazing uh, and beautiful change coming to Christ, right? You're going to be attacked because the devil doesn't want you sharing your testimony, sharing the gospel, serving the kingdom of God in those ways, right? And potentially winning souls with that. So the attacks are bound to come. And, yeah. and I love how you brought up the, you know, Jim Osmond is, we love his book, Truth or Territory on Spiritual Warfare. It's a great book. The attack doesn't mean that you still have a demon hidden in your, I always say the same thing, your epidermis, your armpit, you know, the soul of your, it doesn't mean that just because we came out. And I feel that sometimes we almost have a little bit of a stigma I don't know what you girls think about it, yeah. but coming out of what we were doing, that you know the people that support deliverance ministries are going to say, "Well, you you really have to be delivered." But I came to Christ. No, you have to you have to go through deliverance because you were serving the devil. You must still have a demon yeah. inside of you. Have you guys encountered that? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, I get attacked because I'm I'm anti deliverance ministry. <laughs> because so you know, I I saw someone post. Oh, don't listen to Doreen Virtue. She's not. She doesn't believe in deliverance ministry. As if that just negates my whole testimony. 
And and I went. The thing is, I went to deliverance ministry. I I did that, but it made things worse. It didn't help. And also, it's expensive. And and it's a. I think it's a scam. Honestly, a lot of the deliverance ministries say, "Oh, we're free," but then they push donations like crazy. Hmm. And and it's all about money to them. And Jesus, this is the bottom line. Jesus delivered us on the cross. Not it not- is finished. What part of it is finished do we not understand? And like you said, Jen. We've got the indwelling Holy Spirit once we're saved, and so the demons can't be inside of us. They're around us. So there's Mm -hmm. a difference between possession, like the deliverance ministries are selling, and obsession, which is having them circling you, which the Bible promises. Look at Ephesians 6, you know, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but it's these powers and authorities, these demons, Mm -hmm. fallen angels around us. And you think about the fact of coming, talk about that oppression for a second. They have to try to oppress you after you are saved because they want to keep you quiet. They want to confuse you. They want to manipulate you. They want you to even, I've seen people, and it's very unfortunate, that will even start doubting their salvation. Well, am I really saved? Am I doing something wrong? And that goes into a part of what I'm going to share in a few minutes. But Jack, what about you when you came out of the occult? Right. Were you attacked? What was your experience like? Yeah, I I absolutely was attacked. And something though that to go off of what you were saying, something that's been so helpful for me is when I was attacked when I was first saved, like UD, it was it was very confusing. Um, I just felt more than ever this this attack, like these entities that I thought were my friends, that I thought loved me, were showing their their true colors, and they hated me, and it was it was vile and scary. Um, but even a few years ago, I was on a trip with my pastors for this event. And that night, we were, we'd been talking about these series that we wanted to do, exposing the occult and, and other ones. And I was up um, in my hotel room alone, like researching and stuff. And then I just felt this overwhelming heaviness, but knowing logically everything's okay. And that night, I was overwhelmed with terror. That's the only way you can describe it. Like this pit in my stomach, logically nothing's going on. The awareness of a presence, terror, like weird things happening, things falling, and just fear. And when I tried to read the Bible, I was like terrified to say anything. It was a terrible night. And the next, I barely slept at all. And the next morning I was telling my pastors, I I was actually afraid to say anything because I'm like, here I am, this like weird occult girl. That's how I felt. And how am I supposed to like take this thing that happened that makes no sense um, to them and just say, you know, so I didn't sleep last night because of all this demonic stuff. But I was met with so much grace and um, my pastor, John Benzinger, was so kind and just encouraging me that that happens to believers. And and you don't have to think, oh, what did I do wrong? Because I could so quickly fall into this cycle of like, What does this mean? How did I just like almost obsessively trying to figure out why did this happen? What can I? But he was just encouraging like these are real things that happen. Sometimes it helps to listen to worship music like and he referenced um, David and Saul or to read the Bible referencing like you, Jesus in in Luke four, for example. But yeah, it it was it can be so isolating to have those very real, very terrifying experiences, not know who to talk to about them. You know that this really happened. And then for me, I struggled to like discern, okay, why'd this happen? Yes, um, it can be because of sin that you're that you've g- given the enemy a foothold in that sense. But it can also be like we look at the book of Job, um, just because of God's sovereignty. And so something that um in a video I did with Pastor John talking about spiritual warfare, which I'll link, talking about having a right view of God. Yes, the enemy is real. Yes, spiritual warfare is real. Oppression for Christians, not possession, but oppression is real. There are the, like you were saying in Ephesians 6, there are those forces of evil. Or what comforts me, though, is remembering who God is and his sovereignty. And even in Ephesians 1, it's just amazing. It's talking about Jesus Christ, his power, 
Um, and then it talks about Christ and being far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And so it really helps in those moments to remember who Christ is, that mm-hmm. yes, these forces are yeah. real, but who is Christ? He's far above all of them. He's he's over and above it all. And so um, in those moments, remembering yes. who God is, is so helpful. That's amazing. That's amazing, Jack. That's such a great point. And that, I think that would surely uh, keep you away from the deliverance ministry. Right. Put mm-hmm. your focus back on who Jesus is and knowing that he has authority over those demons, right. over all creation, only he has authority. Man doesn't. He does. That's and I know right. This isn't a video about or a podcast about deliverance ministry. Knowing us, we'll probably do that one day. But, right. yeah. but, but I mean, because you know, people are going to say, oh, what about Mark? Uh, you know, and, and they're casting out demons and we can get, but we could leave that aside for right. now. But the, yeah. Yeah, there's you know. no, but there's not one Christian saved person in the Bible who gets delivered by Jesus. I mean, they're they're all unbelievers. Yeah, they've got demons in them, but not believers with the Holy Spirit. But to your point, Jack, um, about just remembering who Jesus is, there was this experience that I had in early 2018. So it's just been a few months after I was saved, where in the middle of the night, um, there I just I could sense it this really angry, evil demon in our bedroom at night. And I just sat out of bed and I screamed, Jesus, and it was gone. And I, and nothing has happened like that since. Wow. So we sh- instead of, you know, and I know, Jack, you've got some information about this so-called self-deliverance, mm-hmm. which sounds even more hokey than deliverance ministries. But um, I, I had bought those books, you know, prayers to route out demons, all these formulas. Right. To, to, it's all this self-help stuff that we came out of from the new yes. age, you know, and I can fix it myself. But just that one experience in early 2018 where scre- literally screaming for Jesus' help and, and, and like within a nanosecond, that presence is gone. Um, it was just such a reminder that Jesus, he's, he's in charge of everything. Right. He's sovereign. I mean, John, John 1, the prologue, Colossians 1, Genesis 1, all of us, everything was made through Jesus, the Son, by God the Father, through Jesus the Son. So he's, you know, in the New Age, we thought of him as an ascended master. We thought of him as a role model. Um, they called him Sananda or Yeshua. Um, you know, they we didn't know who he was, but to to really remember, he's God. He's He is the Son, the second person of our Holy Trinity, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. This is God we're talking about, and what an honor that we can be called His, that He's He's our brother, that that God the Father is our Father, that we've been adopted into His family. Speaking mm-hmm. of Ephesians, um, it's just such an honor, and we we need to utilize this resource we've been given through our adoption, this inheritance, and quit trying to do things on our own. <laughs> yeah, know? and it's important to know it. It is absolutely true that Christ is over and above all things. And also, sometimes you will still, or you can still go through spiritual warfare, spiritual attack. Um, sometimes God ordains for that. And the Bible talks about us being tested or try going through trials like this. And it's for our good. Even thinking of Romans 8, 28, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, all things work together for good. God knows what he's doing. So In those moments when I'm absolutely terrified, feeling attacked, and you're right, I totally um, agree with that, that a lot of the time it's right before I expose this thing, this dark thing that I was in for the first time, and then all of a sudden it's this experience that's terrifying. But I know that none of this is happening outside of God's control. And so when I remember the character of God, that he is good and loving and he cares for me and like when people that's it bothers me about the prosperity movements and these ideas that okay because of this nothing bad will happen to me but we look at jesus we look at the apostles they they went through trials they suffered but it was for their good and for god's glory and so in those moments knowing that i love just the idea that anything that happens to me has to first pass through god's hand he is truly 
over and above everything. And so in those moments, one, I can I grow in my faith in him. I'm sanctified. And I know that my father's good. Um, and that gets me through a lot of those moments. Oh, man. The attacks that we faced when we first came to Christ aren't only because we were former occultists and New Agers, though. We were newborn believers. Right. Luther. And I've met a lot of people that have gone through that. And I pray. Um, there's a theme here. What you ladies mentioned is something I'm going to share, too, that I experienced, too. Some sort of like, what happened? Did I do something wrong? Mm. Do I say anything to anybody about this? But as a baby believer and a newborn believer, I need to encourage you to always get wise counsel. Uh, pray to God. Pray that he um, has you in a biblically sound church Amen. with pastors that are shepherding the Amen. sheep that you can come to and uh, making relationships with your sisters and brothers in Christ. Don't isolate and don't keep these things to yourself. You're not going to know everything coming to Christ in one second. That's not going to happen. So it's not just because of what we did. Sin is sin. And you mentioned being children. I think you mentioned being adopted into the family of God, D, and that's true. But when we're not children of God until we come that's to right. Christ right. and believe in him and place our faith and trust in him, um, outside of that, we're all children of our father, the devil, mm -hmm. and we are enemies of God. So coming out of that and coming to Christ uh, welcomes spiritual attack. And as Jack said, not outside God's will, not outside God's control, God is sovereign. He's in control. These demons are on a leash. But please don't be dissuaded. Please don't think mm. you've done anything wrong. Um, because that's exactly, I may as well just segue into what happened to me because it was so, and, and like you ladies also, I, I can't, I'm like, I'm listening to you guys and the commonalities mm -hmm. are overwhelming uh, because we get this attack and we knew that it was evil. We could sense it we had the discernment now with the holy spirit especially right i myself i was saved and the church that i uh professed my faith in christ in was the church i started going to and there was a pastor there and he started to counsel me on tuesdays i mean come on i, I come into this with a lot of stuff you know <laughs> yes. medium for so many years mm -hmm. traumas like just trying to understand things and so he was counseling me. I took him up on it. And I had no idea that, you know, in that church, and, and if I'd mentioned this before, please just bear with me. But in that church, there were three pastors and one was a senior pastor. And there were, I didn't know the mechanics of church. I just went and was excited to go. So one day, it wasn't the pastor that was usually preaching. It was the pastor that was counseling me. And he was saying the sermon. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. You know, this is going to be good. And I'm sitting back and I'll never forget it. And I I started getting psychic information and those mm. presences were just hovering, as you say, feeding me psychic information. Now, I was such a baby believer. Maybe I was like a month old. I don't know. Maybe less. I, you know, it's a while ago. And I use this and I feel that I have the liberty to because I'm a former psychic to make a little part in the pun here, but I must have been white as a ghost because I felt every the fear I felt, I felt like it was just me in that place. Mm -hmm. did, did, should I stay? Should I go? Did I do something wrong? Why is this happening to me? Why are they telling me things? Leave me alone. Like the, the, This whole thing, right? So that was Sunday, of course. Tuesday was approaching. I was going to cancel the appointment with my pastor because I was ashamed mm. and I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to say it. I thank God for the Holy Spirit who gave me the strength to go anyway and not cancel. And I sat there with him and he could see something was wrong with me. And I started talking and I told him what had happened. And he said to me, you can tell me what you received. Okay, we're not going to glorify the devil. We're not glorifying those demons. We're giving them credit for nothing. Uh, you can tell me. I think he was just trying to relieve me in a way, like so I wasn't alone with it. And I told him, and it was personal information about a man that 
I never knew. I didn't know from Adam. I mean, he canceled me. I wasn't canceling him. I knew him for what I, you know, around a month or whatever, listening to a sermon, what have you. And it was personal information. And he said to me, I'm not going to lie to you, that hit a nerve. And then he started to explain to me, uh, you know, it, it's funny because he actually had also recommended the screw tape letters and hmm. you know, I'm with you on that day. Uh, but he started to explain things to me that I couldn't have known one month old. I wasn't, I didn't know the Bible in an mm -hmm. hour. I mm -hmm. didn't know what the armor of God meant. Yeah. Right. Like he pointed me to Ephesians 6, 12, and he pointed mm -hmm. me to the armor of God, Ephesians 6, really 10 to 18, right? And putting on that armor of God and being in prayer and Jesus having the authority and it's okay. I didn't do anything wrong. My salvation is sealed. And I, I it was such um, a horrifying experience. And yet God, as you said before, Jack, worked the good yeah. out of it because God grew me from that. And he comforted me and encouraged me despite that yeah. situation. That's so interesting. So that's like a temptation that the devil put yeah. before you to say, okay, here, you can have this secret wisdom, secret knowledge uh, like we used to. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's weird. I didn't, you know, if it's okay to say this, I mean, when I, Michael Knowles asked me that, he said, have you been tempted? I mean, that's another question that People ask a lot. Mm -hmm. Are you ever tempted? Yeah, I get that, that question. We talked about yeah. that recently. I think mm -hmm. we, you know, last episode, and I, I said at that time, no, I, you know, and uh, because I didn't think of it that way. Because once you know that it's demonic, mm -hmm. but was, but now, but what you just said, Dory, makes perfect sense. But were they trying mm -hmm. to tempt? Exactly. Them? Yes. Because yes. that's that's the old the old days we would have said that was a goodie that that was a gift yeah yeah it's not it's not a gift from God it's a you know and so I I just kind of want to bounce off what you both are saying because in the new age at least the part I was in because many people don't know there's different denominations of the new age <laughs> but the part that I was in was always trying to say that uh, this world is is good and everything's mm. good. Um, it's it kind of this panacea. It's a beautiful place. And we would use God's name in vain. We would say, you know, he made it, so therefore everything's good. And we would never acknowledge evil because that was negative and you don't want to manifest anything with negative thought. And so to read the Bible and to really understand that God has allowed, like you said, the book of Job uh, has allowed the devil with a leash to have some control for a time until Jesus return. Um, it, that was really uh, challenging for me. I don't know about for you guys, yeah. to, where it says that the devil's the god, lowercase g, of this world. I I had to just keep reading that and say, is this what it's? Is this really? Is this a typo? I had to go to different translations. Is, is this really saying that the devil's the god, lowercase g, of this world, and and that he's allowed? You know why? And I'm and I used to say, okay, why does God allow evil? He can do anything. He's God. Why doesn't he just fix everything right now? And did you guys wrestle with that? I don't know if I I don't know if I wrestled as much with him be because you because you can really see it too, right? Yeah. Look at look at our culture. Look at yeah. you could see the evil. I wrestled look, with that for sure. Maybe more so like yeah, why is he allowing it? But for me, you know, in that microcosm. So, and you ladies have walked with me and are walking with me through. Um, attacks now that mm -hmm. I've been going through, actually, uh, you know, and on a personal note, it's like, okay, very Job, why? We ask all the same questions. So even like you were wrestling with, well, why is the devil allowed to be here? Why is he allowed to influence people? Why are they wicked? But we also realize that um, these sufferings and these attacks grow us uh, we we endure, we have perseverance through it, our faith becomes more mature. And I'm not trying to just be the solver of the problem here, because it does hit on a very personal level, and it's very emotional. Interesting, though, and I don't know if you guys, you know, I, I would like to hear what you have to say also. Interesting, though, as you start, as God starts moving you out of it, even a little bit at a time, and you can look back, and you could see every step of the way that God provided for you. Yes. Through the attack even. Yes, he allowed it. He allowed it. 
but he provides for us. We're his children. Yeah. Jen, and I'm so I'm really glad that you shared that that experience that you had in the church because it brought back a memory for me that I had really forgotten about. And it was just awful. One of my pastors was preaching on um, it must have been Acts 14 talking about Hermes, which uh, and is basically Thoth or Toth, which was the demon that I believed was leading me. And out of nowhere, as he's preaching, I just saw this presence next to him. I felt like I was going to scream, like I almost like I had no control of my body. It was just awful. And I Ugh. felt so ashamed um, because I was seeing things. I'm ex- I'm experiencing this. I'm sitting in during a sermon and I just felt so isolated. And yet remembering that I I left, sat in my car, was freaked out, so came back. And the only person that I felt like I could trust enough to talk to was my then friend, now husband, who has does not have experience in the occult, but met me with such grace. And so seeing God's hand in that was was so comforting. And then also recently, um, I, I went through a just a spell, not a sp- I hate that word, a season. Word in the pond, you're allowed yes. on that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> of attacks where every night I, it was, it was not fun. Well, and I was kind of genuinely confused, um, knowing that God's good, know, like seeing his hand. And it was actually that same pastor who was preaching that day who I ended up going to. His name's Jeremiah Dennis. And he was talking to me he also has no um, background in the occult, but he was talking to me about what if I read scripture right before bed so that the truth was on my mind rather than kind of remembering my past right. and all these things. What if I um, just put make a note card next to my bed so that if I am awakened in the night or we had a sleep paralysis experience or something like that, I can just turn to the truth and have that in my mind. Um, and that has been really helpful. Just the idea of we're, a few, uh, sorry, Romans 12 talks about us being transformed by, by the renewing of our mind. And I love that you brought up Jesus being tempted in the wilderness, bringing up scripture, saying it is written, basically refuting the, Satan yeah. himself with scripture. And then Jen um, bringing up Ephesians 6, that the sword of the spirit is the word of God. Um, mm-hmm. But it's but it's making those efforts also to yeah. apply the scripture practically and and fight and fight this fight yeah. um, with truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's why we listen to a, a audio Bible at night as we're falling asleep just to saturate our minds. And it really does seem to, you know, going back to kind of that discernment, it makes it seems to make our house more peaceful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and don't let people f- make you feel, but I just want to go back to that because you know, I'm thinking too, I had this, I've had some spiritual attacks over the last uh, year, during the course of the last year. And, uh, you know, somebody, that's why somebody once said to me, well, you shouldn't be experiencing this. You, mm. You're not fully delivered. Maybe I need an exorcism. Uh. Like, no, it's just that it's a spiritual attack. And we have spiritual weapons, and we see that over and over again, like the armor mm-hmm. of God. And uh, 2 Corinthians uh, 10, 3 to 5 tells us that we don't fight a physical battle, mm. but a spiritual one. Yeah. You know, right? And that yeah. we have spiritual weapons, and we need to use them. And I often say to people, you know, because people will think that we have some, that we still have some special power, this level of discernment, and I don't mean discernment through the Holy Spirit, I mm. mean into seeing the spiritual realm and hearing from demons. I say that demons attack you personally. So what is going to affect you mm. may not be what's going to affect me and vice versa, right? So for me, if the the enemy knows my past, the enemy knows what's gonna bo- going to bother me, what maybe is going to try to slow me down and scare me and things like that. And we'll use those things really to make you doubt yourself. To doubt yourself and to distract you. Yes. Mm. Yes. Because it it takes a lot of time to deal with those attacks. Oh, yeah. I had one where I was hearing, um, and that's, oh, that's what, you know, so when I say I've had psychic attacks, I've had, I mean, I can count on one hand in Mm -hmm. over 10 years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have heard demons and that's when people say, oh, you need, you know, deliverance or whatever. No, no. And I know what I heard, trust me. And I know what I've experienced, but 
I will go to, I reached out to a very dear friend of mine who is a former witch. And because you do feel funny sometimes, mm-hmm. I'd like, I can't just go to your, you know, some, I mean, I could, but mm-hmm. they're not going to understand <laughs> right. the way that we do. So if you're out, if you're out of the new age and you're out of the occult, I pray that we make this. I know we're on social media and it seems like such a big out there world, but we actually love you. Yeah. We actually pray for this ministry. We pray for the listeners. We pray for the audience. And I just want to invite you to um, write comments, ask questions in the comment section. Um, If you need some help, again, I know I keep doubling down on this, but don't let anybody think you're crazy. Don't let anybody think that you need to go to a deliverance ministry. No, and don't that do there's it. There's something wrong with you mm-hmm. for, for getting those spiritual attacks. It's not something wrong with you. And it's what is so important to remember too is that Christ, being a Christian is we're we're in a battle. We are the Bible refers to it as a race. We're running, um, but Christ has won the victory, Christian. And so, but that doesn't mean we just sit back, relax, and enjoy the ride until glory. We no. are in a battle. This is a war. And you talked about the prince of the power of the air. It's so important to remember that. And I love back, um, or I'm sorry, in Hebrews 12, talking about cons- basically consider Jesus. Think about Jesus. He's right. suffered. He struggled. He battled. Consider him who endured such endured from sinners such hostility against itself, so, himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. And that's basically talking about a struggle against sin, how we haven't yet resisted to the point of shedding blood, but just having that eternal perspective of, okay, I'm a Christian. This is a war. I'm fighting a battle against sin, the the like um, the flesh, the world, and the devil. That's right. I, it's a fight. Yeah. And, and to remember that we're in this world, but not of this world. Amen. We literally are in exile while we're here and awaiting either Jesus' return or to be called home. And that's what where our home is as Christians. I think people, you know, wonder. You you guys were mentioning before we talked about uh, unrepentant sin being mm-hmm. a reason for spiritual attack, and then conversely, we talk about Job, which had nothing to do with sin, mm-hmm. uh, contrary to his good buddies over there mm-hmm. who were trying to convince him as such. Yes. And that makes me think of the blind man, where. They, whose sin made you blind? Mm-hmm. Whose right. sin was it? I mean, that was, of course, a Jewish cultural thing that they thought that you must have sinned if you were born blind. Mm. Anyway. Right. And it was for God's now glory. Oh, good God. Mm-hmm. Yes. So this one, so how does, so people might struggle with, and, and if you're struggling with this out there today, what do you mean God is so good? What do you mean this is going to bring him glory, my suffering? When you see the blind man and he opens his eyes, and he he not only could physically see, but he saw Christ, our yep. Savior and salvation, right? And you think about, though, it wasn't Job's sin that caused the demonic attacks, but look what happened with Job. At the end of contending, as he thought he was with the Lord, he was told by God to pray for those very people that were leading him astray, not really particularly giving him the best advice, right? Pray for them. And he restored back to Job twofold what he had lost. There are testimonies here. The outcomes that we see in the Bible are so beautiful. And it does bring glory to God because the spiritual attack, and I say this all the time, ladies, the spiritual attack you're going to see even, as I mentioned before, as you start going through that season, you're getting through it, you're coming into a new thing. Or I'm Not that you should have to have a spiritual attack for a whole season, but some of us have a lot of them in a season. And you start coming through and you look back and you could see how good God is, how God worked through it, how God provided for you. But now when you come out of that, you have a testimony that's going to Mm -hmm. help other souls, win souls, encourage souls. And that is where God gets the glory. And he loves us. He loves us. And I love that and how God comforts us in those times so that we can comfort others. Because if we've walked through it, we're able to comfort them with the comfort that God has given us. And if I may read Ephesians 2, it, it's so beautiful <laughs> talking about, and and you, this is this is us. We're once dead in the trespasses and sins and once you want, in which you once walked following the course of this world, following the prince 
of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And then, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so I love just that reminder of who we once were, who we are because of God and his great love for us, and then our position in Christ. It's just such a good reminder to have an eternal perspective through all of this. And then I love he helps Ephesians too. too. Yeah. Yes. He helps us. He helps <clears throat> yeah. Us stand firm in his strength. Amen. In Ephesians 6, right? He tells us to stand firm in his strength. He's right there with us. That's right. With his supernatural power to stand firm in the battle, in whatever spiritual attack you're going through. And D, you mentioned before that Jesus has the victory, mm. Jesus already mm -hmm. won. He and did. We're already in these spiritual attacks. Yes, we have to fight. Yes, we have to stand firm. But we're already fighting from the winning team. Amen. Yeah. We're fighting from the winning team. That's right. Yeah. And Ephesians 2, I love that you read that, Jack. Thank you. <clears throat> and I, I pray that anyone who listened to this who's not yet read, writing, reading the Bible, that they would be encouraged to read the Bible. Yes. And maybe you don't understand it the first time through, and you know we can give you some uh, study Bible recommendations. Um, and of course, as Jen emphasized, to be in a, a really solid church mm. where the pastor's going, doing what's called expository um, preaching line by line through the Bible. Uh, but that verse, that ch that chapter, chapter two, is so good if you e ever go through the spiritual warfare attack of shame. Mm. Because the demons don't just use physical, but they, they use mental and emotional attacks, and they try to make you think that God could never use you or love you because of your past. And they try to just just say that you're a horrible person because of your past. And then if we read Ephesians 2, we can be reminded that we were spiritually dead in our sins. We And it wasn't our doing that made us who we are today. It's but God in his mercy and his grace. So it's really important to know that there's two, and I've mentioned this before, but I'll probably mention it a lot on this podcast because it's so important to know that there's worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. So worldly sorrow is the type of shame that the demons like to put on us, that other people won't like us, you know, that social anxiety kind of shame. What will people think? That, and that's that's just not biblical at all, and we don't need to worry about that. You know, this, it's, not, it's not about what people think as long as, as long as you're pleasing God. That's the only, we're, we're living for an audience of one. Mm -hmm. That's for God to stand before him. Um, but godly shame is something that the Holy Spirit uses because there's always a counterfeit that the demons do. So the Holy Spirit uses godly sorrow to convict us in our sins. So if we're doing something, which we all will do until we get home to heaven, like let's say you have a lustful thought or a hateful thought, that's probably the most common sins that Christians do. Um, and, and Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount said the thoughts are just the same as the actions. So you, you have a hateful thought, it's the same as doing murder. A lustful thought is the same as committing adultery. So if you have those thoughts, which everyone's going to, you stop and you repent because of the godly sorrow that the Holy Spirit gives you. And it, he equips us so beautifully to go through this very challenging life. And the Bible just encourages us. I love the books of Peter because he talks about the suffering we're going through mm. after you have suffered for a little while, he says, and that the suffering is is us becoming more Christ-like, so suffer like Jesus did. And I love James, count it all joy, yes. my brethren, whenever these trials come to you. And that it, there's a lot of talk about how these trials, the suffering builds endurance in us, builds, <laughs> builds character and strength, just like an athlete has to suffer as they are mm. practicing uh, their 
their athletic abilities. Hey, Mindy. And First Peter 4 is also just so good and has got me through so many hard times talking about suffering as a Christian. Um, so I'm, I just totally, yeah. totally echo that the Bible has equipped us for all things pertaining to life and godliness. Like if you're struggling, run to God and he speaks to us through his word. Amen. Absolutely. He And he warns us of the troubles that we're going to have in the world and how amazing that Jesus Christ prayed for us not to be taken out of the world, but to be protected while we're in it. He but, prayed for us. We know that we're going to have trouble. Uh, speaking of First Peter 5, 8, uh, he tells us to uh, that the, the devil is prowling around like a lion yes. mm-hmm. to whom he may devour. He talks about anxiety. God is not silent hmm. on these issues. Uh, he talks about these things. And we also can give the enemy a foothold. We need to remember that. So if you are dealing with some sort of, and anxiety, actually, all of a sudden, anxiety can also be a symptom of oppression. But go to God's word and see what he says about it. He says, be anxious for nothing. It has no value. He tells us to cast our anxieties upon him because he cares for us or cares upon him. And that's in action. That's, that's what I right. Think. You know, we're not just reading this. We're reading it and we need to apply it. Amen. Casting means literally to, like a fishing pole, you cast. You like flinging. He wants us to because he can take it and he wants to help us in it. And like you were saying, to apply it in his strength, not in our own okay. strength. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So the Bible tells us to resist the devil mm. and he will flee. Okay. Not to talk to the devil. This is something that just drives me crazy when I see Christians, including those who did not come out of the occult and new age. They're they're talking to the devil. They're saying, not today, Satan. And that movie War Room that I used to be obsessed with, with Priscilla Shire, where she's got that scene where she's, you know, saying, you're not going to take my husband. She's out in the backyard and screaming at the devil. And I didn't know as a young Christian, so I used to try to talk to the devil. That's the worst thing that we could do. That's talking to the devil or paying someone else to talk to the devil for you is stupid. It's, it's just, it's, it's just give, this is an evil genius who hates us. And who who has no morals, who will do whatever it takes to destroy us, and you're going to talk to this one and say, "Not today, Satan." No, it doesn't work that way. Jesus is the only one who should be talking to the devil. You call on Jesus when demons are around. You don't talk to the demons. You don't talk to the devil ever. And you don't pay people to go to a deliverance ministry to talk to the devil because they're stupid to do that. It doesn't work. Maybe. The devil might say, oh, okay, I'll make it look like it works, you know, because he, he's an evil genius. So he might go away for a moment, but then he'll come back with seven of his friends and he'll make it worse. I think the best news that we can say out of all of this is that <laughs> Jesus is the son of God and he did go to the cross to uh, fulfill the uh, wrath of God for our sin. He did that. He paid the price for us. We deserved hell. We deserve hell. But Jesus made for us a way out of hell. See, a lot of people say, oh, God sends people to hell. No, God sent us a way out. And his name is Jesus. And when you really believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, I go to cry every time I shout that he died for your sin. That's how much he loved the world, guys. He loved the world so much, God, that he gave his only begotten son. And I know you've heard John 3, 16, 3 million times. So here it is again, 3 million and one. And whoever whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. So when we truly believe it, he knows your heart, the only one. The devil doesn't know your heart and mind. Jesus knows your heart. Put all your faith and trust in him. Believe in him with all of your heart. Today could be your day of salvation. Confess him that he died for your sin, that he was buried, and that he was raised the third day. He is the resurrected Son of God, seen by over 500 people, the resurrected Christ. He fulfilled every prophecy of the Old Testament. I don't even have to sit here and give you all the evidence. I'm telling you, it's not seeing is believing, believing is seeing, but you make the choice, and you can make that choice today. That's my last contribution. Ladies, do you have anything else that you'd like to add for this episode? It's amazing who Christ is. And just again, reemphasizing 
that it's not God versus the devil on an equal playing field. One day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of the God the Father. Jesus is coming back and this time it will be in judgment and he will judge the world. And I, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing that as Christians, we get to be in glory, not because of what we earned, but because of his righteousness, because of his finished work on the cross. And yet there is coming a day when the lake of fire that is for the devil and his angels and and they will be repaid that is already sealed it's already written that is the final reality and so we can rest that again this war has been won on the cross christ is the victor and and we're just running this race until he takes us home um but to just have a right view of god a high view of god because a lot of the time we can get caught up in the spiritual warfare and glorify Satan and glorify the demons. Um, and D, you're absolutely right. They are powerful beings, uh, ancient beings. They aren't something to play with. They aren't what the world makes them to be. And yet God is almighty, all powerful, all knowing he's above it all, sovereign over everything. And so having that high view of God is ex- is is exactly where he's supposed to be and having a right view of of our enemy oh, and turning from oh, sin. <laughs> yeah, well, and then Christ helps us to have the strength of, Amen. Um, of resisting the temptation to go back to the new age. And, Amen. Um, and Jen, I love that you share the gospel. Yes. Thank you. I mean, that, that really is the power of God into salvation. And that's what we need is to hear the gospel every day. We, Amen. Um, again, going through this sort of attack is normal. In fact, there's a couple of really popular preachers that I follow on social media who say that if you're not being attacked, they would question your salvation, whether you're really saved or not. Um, Because the Bible promises us that this is going to happen. And that's why the Bible has equipped us. And Jesus said, in this world, there will be trouble, there'll be tribulation. But fear not, for I have overcome the world. He says he promises to be with us always. Hmm. And that to me, I could just spend hours just thinking about that, the the profound implications that Jesus is with us right this very minute for believers and for those he's calling out who maybe not, are not yet saved. And so just to think about that, Jesus is with you. We're commanded to pray. That's the other thing is we're not we're not supposed to act like little passive corks floating on the ocean. We're we're here to we're here to pray, and that includes praying for our loved ones and praying for our leaders. It's you know it's real easy to get mad at politicians and say oh they're you know they're doing this and that, but the Bible says we're supposed to pray for the the politicians and pray for our enemies. How yes. about that for a concept? Yes. Pray for those who are attacking us. That's where and, the fight comes in. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> I've, all of the things, all mm. the things. The spiritual fight when you know Jack, you were saying before. You know, don't be passive. We still have to, we have to fight. We have to stand up and fight. And the fight is going to be to resist your feelings and do exactly what Doreen just mentioned, which is obeying God's command, no matter how you feel, because that spiritual attack is a nefarious agenda to get you back to yourself, if you think about it, right, into those feelings so that you disregard God's commands. Right, because you're not going to feel like going to church. You're not going to feel like picking up the Bible. Mm. You're not when you're under a spiritual attack. But as D said, pray anyway. Pray, pray for the people that it doesn't come. Pray harder for those people. Yeah, harder for your enemies and the politicians. Yeah, and and <laughs> pray that you can. All right, and pray that you can forgive them too, because mm. we are we are commanded to forgive everybody. Yes, we are. And uh, I was just reading in Mark today, you guys are snappier with the addresses, but I was just reading in Mark today about forgiving others. How do we expect our father to forgive hmm. us if we're not going to forgive others? And you know what's interesting? A lot of people will say God's commands are so burdensome, but they're not. They actually set us up for peace hmm. and for an abundant yeah. life because there's healing in forgiveness. You don't do you do it to obey God. But there is a healing for you in store through that forgiveness, right? And we always talk about, and I would love to have this conversation one day, <laughs> reaping what you sow. And I, I allegedly wasn't even contributing anymore after the gospel, but here I am, big mouth. 
So, <laughs> so me and you are in the house. So I, but reaping what you sow, and we and we talk about that, right? But we all reap what we sow. So if you can't forgive somebody else, doesn't a day come down the road that you're going to need to be forgiven too, even by your brethren, even by a family member, even something? Because you're going to mess up. You're going to fall short. We all do. And so we, we, we really need to consider that. And Jesus said, if we love him, we keep his commands. Right. Obeyed, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, again, this is a perfect example of we can't do this in our own strength. How do you forgive someone who's hurt you to the core? You can't. It's, it's, you, you, it's all God. You have to pray, please, Lord, pur- purify my heart. I mean, there, Psalm 139 at the very end has this beautiful prayer about um, anything that's offending you, God, please just forgive me and purify it out of me. I'm paraphrasing. But you, you, you can pray for help with anything you're struggling with. A lot of people think you can't, but God wants us to come to him with everything. He already knows everything. He's omniscient. So he wants us to come to him, just like David did in the Psalms, and just pour our heart out. Say the good, the bad, and the ugly to God. You know, tell him, tell him the politically incorrect stuff in your in your heart. This, tell him, <laughs> tell him the sinful things in your heart. He already knows it, but then plead for him to help you with it, and he will. Amen, amen, sis. Well, I guess we're going to be wrapping up now on this episode of New Age to New Heart. If you guys are good with wrapping up, what do you say? My, my sister. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, we could talk for hours. <laughs> you can all tell. That's why we're doing a podcast series. Yes. <laughs> Reality TV, live in the house with the ex occult and new agers. <laughs> on, on. <laughs> but anyway, it's been a pleasure being with you ladies again. This is such a blessing. This podcast is a blessing. And we definitely want to just reiterate if you, I have to look at the camera, if you have questions, um, or comments that you would like to be addressed in each future episode, please drop them in the comment section. We are looking for them. We are happy to answer them. We're happy to do a show about them. I, I make a topic. Yeah, sure. If you want to know something, let us know. We're happy to help in any way that we can. Signing off now, New Age to New Heart. Thank you so much, Jack and Doreen. And thank you, everybody out there for listening. God bless y'all. Thank you. That was so good.